Hey everyone, it's Margaret Berry. It's been a minute since I had a new video here on my YouTube channel. I've had a lot going on, a lot of different projects the last couple months, and it made it really difficult to make a new video every single week. But that being said, I'm excited to be back with this new stretch routine, and it's gonna focus on the, the chest, the pecs, the upper neck, the traps, and just that upper body area that a lot of us tend to carry tension in, especially if you tend to do a lot of work at your computer or you're driving a lot or you're holding your baby or nursing your baby. Uh, this is really gonna help release some of that tension, and really open up that upper body so that you can feel good again. As far as equipment, you really don't need any equipment except for an exercise ball, or you can even use a pile of pillows with a blanket over it for the last move in the sequence. So let's go ahead and get started. So the very first thing that I want you to do before we get into some of these stretches is I just want you to tune in and kind of notice what kind of tension you have going on. So you can do this seated on the floor. I'm gonna be sitting on an exercise ball. You can do this seated in a chair, but I want you to just First of all, just think about where you're holding tension in your body. You can even close your eyes if you need to, but I just want you to notice, do you feel like even sitting here supported by the ball that you are tensing your muscles, you're kind of bracing? A lot of us can hold our muscles tight without even realizing it. That's just part of the response of the sympathetic nervous system when we're under stress. We tend to hold those muscles really tight. Notice where you feel like you're holding most of your tension. So for me right now, I can feel that it's more, my left shoulder is a little bit tighter and I'm feeling more tension there than my right side. And I can also feel that it's maybe on that same side of my neck that I feel like I'm holding it tight. You can't really release the tension or let go of it until you can feel the restriction and kind of know where you're at. So it helps to tune in at the beginning and at the end of a session to change before and after. So feel where you're holding tension, where you feel tight, maybe even move around a little bit just to kind of feel what your range of motion is like, maybe moving your head a little bit. Now we're gonna get into our first move. This first technique will be familiar to those of you who know about T-tap, but this first part, we're gonna just do the arms portion, part of primary back stretch. You're gonna grab your hands behind, you're gonna press your thumb and press your pinky, and you can either reach all the way down here so that your elbows are pulling in, you're thinking to pull those elbows in towards each other like you're trying to squeeze a pencil between your shoulder blades, or if you don't have the flexibility, you can always grab onto a towel to help you get that, that lift that we want because we really want to open up the chest. When you can open up the chest, you can really release those muscles. Most people just turn their wrist in. See how my shoulder's not moving? They turn in their wrist. You want to think shoulder, elbow, wrist, all the way turning back. So you've got that turn back motion there. Now I want you to do two arm pumps there. So you're just moving just a little bit. Two, thinking your elbows are touching the back wall. Three and four, feeling that stretch across the chest. Now, I just want you to hold that there. Just take some breaths. Thinking to expand your ribcage side to side. Make sure your knees are softly bent. Don't lock your knees. Now we're just gonna do our chin gently down. While you keep those shoulders back, pulling those hands, the knuckles towards the floor, you're just gonna slowly roll your head over to the side and let it hang. Inhale and exhale. I want you to imagine like someone's pulling your ear to the ceiling while your face is straight forward. You're gonna feel a huge stretch all the way through the side neck. Inhale, and then exhale, chin comes back down. You're gonna be looking towards your sternum, looking down at your feet. Slowly roll over to the other side, feeling that stretch again on the side of the neck. Open up that shoulder. The shoulder tends to want to collapse in. Open it up, inhale, and exhale. And then I want you to slowly come over to the center and then slowly other side, hold for two. And then I want you to do some tilts. So chin comes in, you're just gonna gently tilt. Just really focus on keeping your shoulders back and your head straight to the side. Inhale, exhale, chin in, slowly go to the other side, face forward, feeling this tensional pull from your shoulder all the way down to your ear and all the way up there. Inhale, tilt again, just warming up the chest, inhale. Coming back to the center now, do two little pumps here. Ready? Little pump, two. You're just opening up that chest. Now you're gonna just hinge over to a flat back. Head looks down at the ground, elbows are still pulling up. Want you to do a little pump there. Pump, two, three. Now go over the head if you can. If you can't come that far, just put your hands on your glutes 
and we'll roll up shortly. Tuck your chin, relax your head to the ground. Tuck the chin and relax. Now, drop those hands down, really relax them. Now, I want you to put your hands on top of your knees and then I want you to curl to protect that back and stretch the back. Now go up to the mid thigh, mid thigh, and then push and roll straight up. Top of the thigh, top of the thigh. I want you to push straight up. Think like you're reaching the rib cage off the hips. You're stretching that rib to hip, ready? Press tall, two, three, and then just come back down. Okay, now I'm sitting on my exercise ball. You can sit on a chair, whatever you wanna sit on, but we're gonna start working the neck a little bit more. So I want you to reach your hand up and I want you to kind of grip on the side of the neck. So this is gonna be right behind the ear. You're just gonna place your flat hand there. And I want you to just pull towards the side. This is just a simple trap stretch. I want your other hand to be externally rotated to the side, palm out to the side to really stretch the side of that neck. This is just a manual pull. Now I want you to feel that stretch as you pull that head. You may feel that you're gonna feel it really intensely right there in your sternocleidomastoid muscle and also down into the shoulder and even the deltoid as well. So right there, I want you to just do some breaths. So take some breaths. Notice with every exhale, it gets a little bit longer and looser. Try not to hold the tension. We'll hold each of these, you know, anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute. But when you're at home, I really want you to hold it until you start to feel something change. So right now I'm starting to feel it release a little bit. You can go a little bit further if you can. A couple more breaths. Really relax. Most people tense up even when they stretch. Now, slowly, 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 come back to the center. Woo, big stretch there. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. This is a very basic stretch, but when you're really intentional about it, it actually makes a difference. So, hand comes up, you're kinda, again, gripping the side of that neck to pull it over. You can look at your armpit, or you can look a little bit more out to the side, but remember, that other arm, you want it Externally rotated, palm to the side. Now remember the magic here is in doing nothing and breathing. So just relax. Feel how you're just releasing that tension. Notice if you're gritting your teeth when it's tight, you wanna just try to relax. Relax your jaw as you breathe. There, now I can feel it start to release, you may too. Like I said, at home, you can hold this for as long as you need to until it starts to give way. Usually it's about 30 seconds or more. Now I want you to just very slowly, always do this very slowly. Slowly, woo, come back up to the center. Next, we're gonna do a chin tuck pull. Interlace your hands behind your head and you're going to put them kind of at the base of your skull. So you're kind of almost pulling up on the skin there at the base of your skull. Then you're gonna have your elbows coming in. So I want you to kind of bring those elbows in and the beauty of this stretch is in its simplicity, you're just tucking your chin while you're pulling those elbows in for some stability. Here's a side view of what this looks like. You're gonna take those hands, remember, base the neck, interlacing the hands, fingers, pulling up on that, but the elbows pull in. Now, I want you to gently curl the tailbone a little bit, and then I want you to tuck your chin. This is kind of like a fetal position, but it's while you're sitting up. So your belly button is gonna kind of come in. You're not sucking it in. You're just letting it come in while you bring those elbows in. Now you're gonna to start to feel a little stretch kind of at the top of the spine is where you're gonna to start to feel that. So go ahead and breathe. Breathing. The more you breathe, the more your body will relax into it. Just letting go. Remember, if you're not flexible enough to go down as far, just go to your own best ability. It's okay, you will grow in your flexibility and range of motion as you do this. Now, here's the next thing we're gonna do. I want you to just gently turn side to side. So I want you to turn to the left while you're tucking, still tucking the tailbone, rounding that back, getting that nice stretch all the way down the back, inhale. And then exhale, I want you to slowly come back to center. You're just kind of, this is called pandiculation, when you're kind of stretching the body while moving it in what way feels good. I just want you to do that a couple more times, keeping that chin nicely tucked. You're just doing what feels good. Go where you want to. You can even go in little kind of figure eights. This works all the way up that top of that spine, kind of thoracic spine, all those muscles that attach. 
Now, one more time, just hold it there in the center. Take another big deep breath. Making sure your tailbone's tucking under here. You're trying to really work all the way to the pelvis. Now slowly roll up. Slowly come up. I want you to come up to the top and I want you to just look up for a second, feeling that stretch. And then come straight back down. Now you may feel a little dizzy there. That's okay. Just give yourself a second if you do. And we're gonna go into our next move. Next, we're gonna do a move where we pull the skin and go to the side. So you're gonna take your hand and you wanna find your collarbone. So there's gonna be this part of your neck that attaches underneath the collarbone. And I want you to kind of go just above the collarbone to where you can pull, kind of pin the skin on the side of your neck. So you're pulling to pin the skin and then you keep that skin pinned while you go to the side. So you're gonna keep that pulling, inhale, and then keeping that pressure there, slowly go to the side. Now right here, I want you to play with this. Notice when you look up, you're gonna feel it all the way up to your jaw. Going forward, you're gonna feel it more in the front, but just kind of play with it. Feel that stretch there. You're really pinning and pulling that skin. You're using that collarbone as an area to have leverage to pull and stretch that skin. Looking to the side a little bit. Really relaxing into it. Being aware of how the shoulder is kind of trying to hike up. <laughs> Sometimes that'll happen if we're really tight there. Just doing what feels good. And then take one more breath. And then I want you to slowly come up to the center. We'll do the exact same thing on the other side. So again, it's gonna be just above the collarbone. You're thinking to pull the skin, pulling it down at the collarbone to kind of restrict that motion. Then you're gonna go over to the side. Now I forgot to say this earlier, but you can also rotate that arm out to kind of open up that side of the pec. But again, just relaxing that. This really releases the side of the muscles, the platysma muscles especially, and also that, again, the SCM muscle there, just really relaxes it. Just kind of move as you feel led. Take a breath and exhale. Now, very slowly, coming back up. Ooh. Okay, next we're gonna do our straight back chin press. So to do this, you're gonna get on the side, on your chair or on your ball, and I want you to press right underneath your chin. So I want you to think if you, you know, your, your fingers are right here, you're going to go just underneath the chin, all right? And you're going to be pressing lightly there, kind of light to moderate pressure. But you're going to press there while you lean up and lean back. And just again, go to your own best ability. If you have cervical instability, you're going to want to stay about right here. But you're really just trying to stretch this whole front of the body. And then I want you to come slowly back in, tuck the chin for a second, more repeat, come back up, fingers press underneath the chin, slowly come back. You can use your whole body to do this too. And then come slowly back up. That one is intense. You don't want to hold that one for too long, maybe just a couple seconds to kind of lengthen that. Now it's time for one of my favorite moves, the neck pull arm stretch. A lot of people feel tension here and they don't realize that that tension is actually creating more tension in their neck. So we're gonna release both of them with this stretch. You're going to take your hand and you're gonna do that little pinning the skin there. Remember, it's just above the collarbone, pulling down and pressing on the collarbone to kind of create that restrictive motion. Then you're gonna put your arm out. So here's how it works. You're gonna reach your head over and you're gonna gently lift your chin up a little bit to the side. And while you do that, you're going to bend your hand back. Now this can be really intense if you have any nerve issues. This kind of acts as a nerve floss. So just do this to your best ability as best you can. It can be very intense. You will feel a lot of tension usually right here in the front of the arm. That is a good sign you need to keep doing this. So look up to the side. You kind of time it with looking to the side and then bring the hand out. Looking to the side, oh, big stretch, bring it out. Looking to the side and bring it in. Looking to the side, see how I'm getting more length there as you do this? You'll get even more length every time. Let's do four more. Over and in, see how my head's getting more length and my arm is too? Two and back in, two more. Back and bring it in. And last time on this side, back and in. Oh, that feels so good. Bring your arm in. Do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to scoot over here. Remember, opposite hand, opposite side of the neck. 
you're bringing it up, you're kind of pinning the skin there at the collarbone, you're just kind of hand at the collarbone, other hand goes out, and we're gonna do this where we're looking to the side, flexing the wrist, and then bringing it back over. Now you may be feeling this so intensely in your forearm and your hand that you can't go all the way back, you can only go like right there. That is totally okay, just go to your own best ability. Keeping that hand pressing there, you can even look more up and back if you prefer. That will work a little bit of a different area. Kind of up and back instead of side to side. Just everyone's going to be different as far as where they're going to be tight. So that's why playing around with the position can be really helpful. See, I'm getting more length there. Up and back. Side and back. Doing whatever direction feels appropriate for you. We'll do three more. Out and in. Out, and then this is the last one. Out, and then bring it in. Whoo, that's so much, so much tension relief just from doing that. Next, we're gonna do posture power arms where our head's going to be looking to the side. Again, I'm sitting here on my ball, but you can do this standing, you can do this in a chair, you can do it wherever you want. You just wanna have room to stick your arms out, shoulders pull back. So here's how you do posture power arms. You bring one arm in, we're not gonna to look to the side or do our arm floss yet, but I just want you to get used to the movement here. So you're tall with your torso, your shoulder blades are pulling down your back, you're not collapsing your rib cage. You're really thinking to keep it tall. You're gonna bring your arm in, your elbow goes up while your chest comes up, but your ribs stay stable. And then bring the arm back out. So let's do a couple more of those just as a warm up and out. This really is great for the shoulders, for the chest. Out and open out we'll do one more each side and then we're going to look to the side and floss the arms just follow along and out okay so here we go so you're gonna go in with the arm we're gonna bend it back just like we did but we're gonna look the opposite direction huge lateral stretch bring it in so it's in open out and then looking to the side flexing the wrist and then bring it in so it's in open out and looking over the shoulder, huge tension release there. In, open, and make sure that your traps, you're not, make sure you're not creeping up to your ears when you're doing this. Try to keep it low. Most of us are trap dominant. This can kind of help get us out of that position, but you gotta think to center that tension in the middle of your back and not up in your shoulders. Looking over, oh, I got some more range of motion there. In, open, we'll do two more each side. Open, in, out and looking over the shoulder, flex that wrist in, open and looking over the shoulder. One more time each side, in, open, looking over the shoulder. Hands are in the jazz hand position and back in and open and back in. And then I just want you to bring your hands down. Oh, that also kind of works those arms a little bit. Before we get to our last move, let's do one more chest opening stretch where you bring again, you bring your hands behind and you're gonna think to reach down to bring the chest up. So I want you to keep that position wherever you are, if you're standing, sitting, but I want you to just think again, bringing that chest up. You're really thinking to bring the elbows forward. You're kind of thinking to bring those elbows forward and the shoulders forward even. So just do a few little side to side. Notice that that feels different than when you did it earlier. Other side and then other side and then other side. And then just come back forward, release it out. Let's do a clap away right here. Elbows forward, hand back. So you're thinking, bring those elbows tight in towards the body, but I want you to clap at the front. And then I want you to do your bear claw. So pulling back the knuckles, stretching the thumb, and then the thumbs go to the back. So it's clap and open out, two, open. This is great for the shoulder joint. In and out, three, four, five, six and we're going for eight seven and eight and that just gets out some of that tension okay last move passive chest release on the ball so you can use an exercise ball if you do not have an exercise ball i want you to take some pillows from your bed maybe your comforter lay it on the floor anything that you can kind of lay on passively for this stretch so if you have an exercise ball you will just be getting on it and i'm going to go ahead and tell you it looks really dumb and weird but it feels so good after all that chest opening work you did so you're just going to lay back flat on the ball you're going to bend those knees and again if you're doing this with your mounted up pillows you'll just do it the same way you're going to bend down a little bit so that your chest is the highest point of the ball then i want you to reach your arms up and i just want you to reach them 
all the way out. Now you can play with the position here, but once you get your arms out to the side, I want you to just kind of roll up so that your chest is, again, the highest point. Your neck is not tense at all. It's just laying there. Now, you're just thinking to reach that chest up to the ceiling. You're in the exact opposite position of what a lot of us are in during our day, hunched over the computer, carrying a baby, you know, riding in the car, driving the car. So this is the polar opposite. Now, as you do this, you can kind of go back and forth between the knees are bent, maybe the knees are a little more straight, but you're just gonna lay there and you're just gonna chill for a couple seconds. Really notice if you're holding any tension there in your chest, just let it go. Just, you can even kind of move your arms a little bit. You can even move your arms up further. So I had mine out more in a wide V shape. You can go above your head, feel what that feels like. You're gonna feel that pulling down into your pelvis a little bit. Maybe go out to the side. But you know, you can kind of play around with the position here. I usually like to alternate between the bent leg and then straightening out. But again, just take some breaths there. Feel how gravity is pulling your two arms to the ground, which is also pulling on your pectoral muscles at your chest. Your sternum, think that your sternum is coming up and your pec muscles and your chest are just going to the side. And that's just gonna open up all that area. It feels so good. Again, if you have some issue with vertigo or head pressure, you can come up a little bit more so that you're not, you know, your head's not totally laying back, but I highly recommend this neutral, head position where it's kind of pulling towards the ground feels so good. Just take a couple more breaths there. Again, just letting that chest fall to the side, letting that tension roll down your arms. And now when you're ready to come out of that position, you're just really slowly, you're gonna come out. If you're laying on your pillows, you can just slowly walk up. But if you're on the ball, I want you to slowly, slowly roll down, bring your head, support your hand with your head, and then you're done. Now we're gonna check in again at the end. Don't skip this part, this is important. So I just want you to sit there again, kind of like you did at the beginning, and I want you to think about how you feel now. So think about earlier as far as how much tension maybe you were carrying in your body or if your body's just kind of holding on to uh, gripping the earth as you're sitting here. Just think about how you feel now. Maybe move your, you know, move your head a little bit, move your upper body. Notice if it's a little bit more fluid and maybe you feel a little bit better circulation there. It's not so stagnant and sticky. Those are some signs that you've gotten out some tension in what we did today. Again, you can do this every day. You can do this multiple times a day if you want, if you have the time. It's just gonna help really open up that area and give you some uh, length and flexibility in this area. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this sequence. I know I feel really good after doing all of that. I feel like my upper body feels so loose and relaxed. If you enjoyed this, I'm considering making a package of all of my favorite stretch sequences for different parts of the body. So it'd be lower body, full body, upper body, because I have a lot of interesting stretches that I have found work and help in terms of creating length and helping release tension. So be on the lookout for that. I'm going to be working on that over the next couple months. Love to hear your feedback on that. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, 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 oh,